All right. So this week, uh, this week we are diving into something uh, pretty heavy. Yeah. We're talking Hurricane Helene. Yeah. Um, recovery efforts, and it seems like just a whole bunch of political stuff swirling around it too. Yeah. You've sent us a ton of stuff. Yeah. FEMA reports, news articles. Right. Even some social media buzz. Yeah. It's uh, uh, and it seems like everyone has something to say. It's big, isn't it? I mean, you have this like natural disaster, right? This huge tragedy, and then almost immediately becomes this like political lightning rod. Yeah. And you know misinformation right and then just these like really big questions about how do we support communities after mm -hmm. something like this happens it's like a pandora's box of just complicated issues like... so before we get into all of that let's give everyone a quick recap of what happened with helene okay i pulled this straight from fema's website okay they've designated it disaster number dr 4830-ga okay and it looks like over 150,000 households in georgia alone have registered for assistance wow and that's just one state right and i think you know we have to remember behind those numbers are actual people mm -hmm. you know whose lives have been totally flipped upside down. Yeah. Over 200 lives were lost in North Carolina. God. Just in North Carolina. Uh -huh. And Governor Cooper said it best. Yeah. You know, entire communities were wiped off the map. Wiped off the map. I mean, that's, yeah. it's hard to even imagine that. It's hard to comprehend. And so no wonder everyone's looking at FEMA like, can you handle this? Right. Can they even handle this? Especially with reports estimating billions of dollars in damages. Billions. That's exactly right. And, you know, and that's where things start to get really uh, yeah. interesting. And you know, by interesting, I mean potentially really bad. Yeah. Uh, Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas, He's been making statements yeah, yeah. Uh, well, saying that FEMA can handle the immediate needs, you know, getting supplies to people, setting up shelters, that kind of thing. But he's really concerned about what happens next. Right. And it wasn't just a casual comment. Yeah. He was on Air Force One that. with President Biden mm. and apparently expressed, which on the surface sounds like a lot of money. It does sound like a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> but then when you start to think about it, that $20 billion that's supposed to cover everything. Right. Immediate relief, long-term rebuilding. Multiple states. And it's just Helene. Yeah. And we've already seen estimates in the tens of billions. Right. And so this is where the political stuff really gets going. Oh, yeah. You've got senators from both sides yeah. saying, this isn't enough. Of course. We need to get back into session now yeah. and address this funding gap before the next one hits. Right. Because who knows what could happen. And then you've got the House speaker, a right. Republican, basically right. saying, everyone calm down. Yeah, take it easy. There's no need to panic. Right. So we've got a potential funding showdown brewing. The human cost of the hurricane is still unfolding. Right. And then as if that wasn't enough. As if that wasn't bad enough already, right? You've got this whole other storm brewing online, Sorry? this hurricane of misinformation about FEMA and why they might be short on funds. That's right. And this is where we have to be really careful because this is powerful stuff. It preys on people's emotions. Yeah. You know, especially when something like this happens and it can just spread so fast online. Right. And it's not just some random accounts either. I'm looking at this article from the White House memo and they're reporting that like Trump and his allies are claiming that FEMA is strapped because they took all the money to help migrants at the border. Which is you know, unfortunately something we've heard before. And it's really uh, concerning, I think, especially in this case, because it's being used to explain away these really legitimate concerns about FEMA's budget. Yeah, so let's break this down, because you're listening to this and you might be thinking, well, yeah, that does sound like something the government would do, like take money from one pot to use for something else, but what do the facts say? Right, well, the good news here is we can go right to the source. Okay. FEMA's own website says specifically that the disaster relief fund, which is what they use for hurricanes, earthquakes, all of that's separate. Okay. It can't be used for things that aren't disaster related. So no robbing Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like having a separate savings account for emergencies. You wouldn't take money out of that to buy groceries, would you? Right. It's for a specific thing. But it seems like even though FEMA is saying that this rumor won't go away, right. I saw it on my own social media yeah. and it wasn't just those like random pages that I accidentally follow of course, like those people I know and that's the thing about misinformation it's like it gets you right where you are emotionally yeah people are scared they want to blame somebody and this just gives them that yeah it's easier to believe a conspiracy than to try to understand government funding way easier oh my god it's like we're wired for that totally I read this article in Forbes and they were saying that like CNN and all these other places they've debunked this a million times right. but here we are again still talking about it and that's what's so frustrating because you have journalists you have people whose literal job it is to check the facts and they do yeah but it's like no match for a good conspiracy. Right. It really makes you wonder, what's the answer? Like, how do you stop this? Is it just more education, more transparency from the government? Right. Or is it something bigger? Yeah. Or is it like a fundamental lack of trust? Right. Which is a whole other thing. Not a whole other deep dive. Seriously. But I think for now, yeah. let's maybe shift gears a bit. Okay. And talk about the real challenges that FEMA is facing. Okay. Because this whole migrant thing, mm -hmm. it's a distraction from the fact that they've been having budget problems for a while, even before Helene. It's like a manufactured crisis on top of a real one. Totally. And I've been doing some digging on this. Yeah. Tell me what you found. Okay. So even before Helene even hit, there were already warning signs, like Democrats in Congress were saying that FEMA is stretched too thin. And I found this article in Forbes that was saying that FEMA actually had to pause non-emergency funds just to make sure they had enough for hurricane season. Wait, so they were robbing Peter to pay Paul, but not to help migrants? It was to prepare for hurricanes. Exactly. That seems crazy. It does seem kind of backwards, right? And remember what we were talking about earlier about Mallorca's and him being worried about FEMA's resources? Yeah. That was before Helene hit. Wow. Like, this wasn't something they realized after the fact. Uh -huh. They knew this was a potential problem. Right. And this is where I think it's important for everyone listening to understand this isn't just numbers in a spreadsheet. This is real people's lives. Absolutely. And what happens if another major hurricane hits? Exactly what happens then. Does FEMA have enough? Yeah. Or are people going to be waiting even longer for help? So we've got this perfect storm brewing a hurricane season that's not over an already tight budget and then just a whole bunch of misinformation making it harder to even talk about. 
what's going on here? It's like trying to prepare for a hurricane while there's another disaster happening at the same time. Totally. And that other disaster is the misinformation. Right. And that can be just as bad as the storm itself. Yeah. Because, you know, in those first few hours and days when something like this happens, mm -hmm. people need to know what's going on. Right. To make really important decisions. Like, where do I go? Is it safe to be here? Exactly. You don't want to have to figure that out while your phone's about to die. Exactly. And you can't always trust what you see online. It's like you survive the hurricane and then you have to deal with all this fake news and rumors. Yeah. Right. And it's not just harmless stuff either. Mm. I saw this article in the Washington Post about this fake news report that went viral. Yeah, like, saying that another hurricane was going to hit the same place that Helene just hit. Oh, gosh. Can you imagine thinking you got through the worst of it? I know. And then seeing that. And what about that story about the dam? Oh, yeah. That was in the Post, too. Yeah. This rumor that a dam was going to break and so people were evacuating and emergency people are going to the wrong place. It was chaos. See, this is what I'm talking about, those aha moments. Like, you're listening to this and you're probably thinking, okay, how do I not fall for this? How do I know what's real? That's a good question. Especially when it feels like everyone's lying to you. Yeah, and it, it can be hard. Yeah. But honestly, you don't have to be like a computer genius to figure this stuff out. Right. Sometimes the simplest answer is the best one. Okay, so give me some tips. My phone's about to die from reading too much about this hurricane. All right, so number one, check your sources. Okay. Where is this information coming from? Is it like a real news place or is it some guy with a cartoon picture for his profile? Right, good point. And don't share unless you're 100% sure it's true. FEMA says that too, right? Exactly. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, even if you delete it later, the damage is done. Totally. So we talked about the government, we talked about the media, but what about someone like Elon Musk with his Starlink thing? He's been pretty vocal about this whole thing. Yeah, and that's where things get even trickier because on the one hand, you have him saying that FEMA is blocking Starlink deliveries. Really? Which is a big deal. That's a big accusation. Right, but then you have the transportation secretary saying that's not true at all. And then it gets even weirder because then he's on Twitter retweeting Trump and agreeing with him about the money for migrants. I know, it's hard to keep track of. It really is, and it just goes to show you how hard it is to know what to believe these days. It really does. And it makes you think about how do we make sure people get information quickly, but also make sure that information is accurate. It's a tough balance, and it kind of feels like it all comes down to us. What do you mean? Like, we have to be smarter about what we believe and what we share online. We can't just trust everything we see. That's a really good point. Because what we do online, it affects other people too. Yeah, especially in situations like this. Yeah, exactly. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, let's leave you with this. How do we make sure FEMA has enough money to do their job? And how do we make sure people get the information they need in a crisis? And most importantly, what can you do to help make that happen? Think about it, stay informed, and we'll see you next time.